Yeah. Yeah. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Hi, Megan. Greg. Hi, Kent. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Greg. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, Renee. Nice to meet you. Hey, Nice to meet you. Hey, Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good afternoon, everyone. We are barely misfits. I'm Megan, the CEO. I'm Destiny, the CMO. I'm Jesus, the CTO. I'm Renee, I'm the co-CTO. I'm Emmanuel, the CFO. And our motto is stand out, fit in. So as Fairly Misfits, we want to represent people who are misunderstood and stand out by creating a cartoon with characters that people can relate to by being inclusive and celebrating their individuality. Our vision statement for Fairly Misfits is to get worldwide fans watching our cartoon and being the new hot topic. So what we want from our customers is for them to feel confident about themselves and, and know that it's okay to be different. The problem we'd like to solve as Barely Misfits are people being socially outcasted. The way we'd like to do this is by getting people and like teaching them to be more open-minded and celebrating everyone's uniqueness. So our target customer is 13 to 16 year olds because we believe that at that age, they're more open-minded about the things that they learn, and that way they have a better understanding. So our solution is to create a cartoon that educates people and also makes them feel more confident in themselves. And topics that we would like to focus on are illness such as depression and anxiety, disabilities such as being an amputee or having autism, Down syndrome, and more. Also, other topics such as being part of the LGBTQ plus community, um, gender roles, and things that make you stand out, such as your personality, your fashion, and hobbies, and more. So our competitors consist of Sanrio, um, which is a uh, Hello Kitty and those types of things, um, Line Friends, Cacao Friends, um, my Little Pony and Care Bears, and we noticed that a lot of these don't really go that into depth. They all have um, a lot of personalities, and our goal is to have um, more complex characters, but um, have more simple people, like representing the uh, mental disabilities and issues such as that. Those. Which is why our unique value is that we tackle topics that are hard to educate kids on, we do it in a lighthearted way. That way they're open-minded about people who are misunderstood. So for the market size, our total addressable market, as in globally, is around $18.5 billion, potentially. And our serviceable addressable market is around $835 million. So for our marketing test, we're planning on running an ad and with that, I will see the people that are interested in us, how many people actually want to subscribe and watch our shows. And aside from that, we're also advertising on Instagram and Facebook. For our financial model, so our cost, since we want to make a cartoon, we want to hire an animator, so we'd have to pay them. So for animation and manufacturing for our merch, for our revenue sources would be the cartoon viewers of the people watching it, the show, and our merch, and it'd be the same for our profit. So our goal, our first goal is to get a following on social media so we could keep them updated on what's coming next. And we're thinking that maybe we could have our show streamed on Netflix and gain a fan base to make revenue off of our merchandise. And so eventually to get started on creating our characters, we'll need money for animators. Thank you for your time. Questions, comments, or concerns? <clears throat> so do you know what the costs are? I mean, um, for the animator and all these things that you're asking about? Right now, we're not sure because we were look, thinking about getting um, college students to animate for us. And when we looked into um, signing with Netflix, they would buy our idea or, and we would need an attorney to like get our um, ideas submitted, so we couldn't find how much that would cost. Yet. Why, why go Netflix? Why not go YouTube? 
Um, that was also one of our earlier ideas, but we thought Netflix would be like a good platform where they could do the production for us. Okay. Um, I mean, I think that's a good, I mean, that might be a leap, but you could start with YouTube in the sense that from a low cost standpoint, you could be a good test model. It could be a good way to just kind of see through, you know, engagement, you get people commenting, you could get a lot of good data from it and see without a lot of the costs associated with it. I mean, I think the idea is cute. I really do. I, I mean, maybe cute's a little, but I, I mean, I think it's a good idea. I think you're basically taking things that you're seeing in children's books and animating them. You know, and I think that's a, uh, you know, I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, again, I, I, I would really like to know the cost, and then once you know the cost, you got to figure out, okay, I'm going to pay these people because that's that's the other thing. I don't. Can you tell me a little bit of how you're going to make this marketable? Where the revenue is going to come from? I mean, even if you did Netflix, it's still going to cost you a lot of money, but I, I, I don't, I, I don't know how much they're going to pay you for that. So. Again, I'm just trying to figure out where your revenue model is in the sense of how you're going to get money from it. Um, well, yeah, so we don't know how much that would cost, but when we first thought about putting it on YouTube, we, um, we were thinking about animating ourselves, and so it would be a lot of free labor until we get our fan base who would eventually, we would eventually profit off of the merchandise that we sell. Okay, so are you saying that the only way you're going to make money is off merchandise? Um, that was what we were thinking before, but that's not what we wanted no longer to do. Yeah, because I don't see how you, yeah. I, I, guess, I, I guess the big thing for me is, is that just the, I mean, let's just say you get all the costs. Let's say you get the animator and all the kind of things, you know, whatever. Even whether you do YouTube or not, I guess I'm just trying to figure out where, how you're going to get the money. I, I just don't know where. That's where I'm a little confused. It's just the revenue. I don't know if Netflix pays you. I don't know how that would work, but I don't know if it would be enough. Um, I, again, those are just those are just some of my, you know, kind of big, you know, big item kind of things. It's just I, I'm a, I'm I, I, being in my business. I'm I'm all about where's the money, where does it come from, you know, what's it going to cost me, where I'm going to get a return. So. That's just where I'm coming from in the sense of just trying to figure it out. I mean, I think, again, I think the concept's really interesting and has some uh, need. And I think that the way that you can do that by kind of softening the idea in ways where people can f find comfort and be okay, you know, kind of extending the children's books that a lot of you see into, you know, animation where people can have a visual stimulation and poison and stuff. I just, that was just, I'm just a little concerned about the finance. Go ahead. Another opportunity for revenue would be to explore some of the larger organizations that support these particular um, topics. Um, for example, the Mental Health Challenge one, um, the autistic community, um, asking them for support um, to create revenue stream. Asking them to sponsor one of the episodes, one of the um, That's a good idea. Uh, ideas that you want to work with. Um, it, will lend credibility to that particular episode that you're creating. It will also support the information and the messaging um, being appropriate to the audiences as well. So that's a, another opportunity to explore for revenue streams. Um, and many organizations are looking to reach various audiences, um, specifically this targeted audience that you have. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, and they might even help you with some of the production, and then you can still do YouTube and still have the sponsorship, and you can also do YouTube apps ads too. Would be you know the way to do it. But yeah, I think that's a great idea. Especially if this is designed to be both educational and yeah. also a little more kind of help students cope with one the students who might not know or students kids who might not know how to deal with kids who might feel interested, but those yeah. who who feel themselves getting agencies, getting getting classrooms. Um, and, and to go along that, I think your age range of 13 to 16 is a little too high. How old are you? 16. How old are you? 16. How old are you? 16. Do you watch cartoons? Sometimes. Sometimes. Would you watch mm -hmm. cartoons like this? Honestly. 
I have, a, I have a six-year-old nephew, and I know he wouldn't watch cartoons. But my eight-year-old son, who deals with this already, he's already mentioned things, and already sometimes feels a little out of touch as well. Um, I think that's the perfect age range, like eight to 11, where that's kind of a key point of where they kind of start to be accepted, and kids start judging and things, and uh, uh, um, acknowledging things. Um, plus, it's, I feel this could be more kiddish. I think that would be a better market for you, and that could be a better sell for people like third grade teachers who might want to have a lesson on something like this when they see kids are treating a kid a certain way or there's a kid who's having a hard time. That's a great lesson for them. And so I think that age range would be better for you if you are going to go the cartoon route. If you're going to go 13 plus, you might want to go with actual real actors then. Because the kids can see themselves more in that realm. Or when kids are younger, they see themselves more as the, the Care Bears and the My Little Ponies, things like that. You know, or Pokemon or whatever they like watch. Um, but that'd be my suggestion. I, I think, oh yeah, YouTube is also a good way to start. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know the name of the maker of Hello Kitty? Um, the company is mm -hmm. Samuel. Samuel, right? Yes. They have a lot of different offshoots of just Hello Kitty. Uh, they're a huge company. Yeah. Um, and I'm going back to the revenue stream too. Uh, not just them, all the all your competitors. This is a huge market, uh, and they. <laughs> try and get to get into that market. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking you have to go up against them, and how are you going to do it? Um, thank you for asking that. That's like one of our biggest goals, like that, like our number one competitor. We want to be as big as them, but we're like still not sure how to get there. Because our other competitor, um, Line Friends, it was created by a Japanese phone line company, and they were just like stickers that you send in text messages, like emojis, and they like gained a big fan base and they have um, animation on YouTube, they're getting a cartoon on Netflix. And so something as small as that like turned really big. So we're hoping that just from the start of our cartoon we could become big like that too. Okay, that leads me to my next question. Uh, you're going to have storefronts online for sales because all those stores closed down because they were leaving revenue in the storefronts in malls. So how are you going to distribute? Um, we're hoping to start off by distribute, distribute, <laughs> say that word, on our, yeah, on our website. Okay. And if we gain more popularity, hopefully, into stores. And where are these products going to be made? Manufacturers. Um, uh, which ones? Where? Um, we're not sure yet. We. We did look into some manufacturers when we were um, thinking about making plushies and figurines, but I can't remember the names right now. So primarily China, Mexico? We were looking, to, um, looking into the ones in the United States, but I do know that. It's pretty expensive. Yeah, we're in place another much cheaper. Okay. Awesome. I don't care. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.